Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today's topic is uh, Group by Cube. Uh, we have seen uh, quite some interest around this topic recently, so I thought I'd just share some ideas. So, let's get started. Uh, first of all, uh, my name is hans Jung Schönig. I'm the CEO of Cybertech and I'm a senior uh, Postgres uh, database consultant. Uh, with more than um, 20 years of experience. So if you want to find out more, uh, check out my website. So uh, as I mentioned uh, last time, we are an international company. So we got offices around the globe. So we accumulated a fair amount of uh, Postgres experience and we just want to share uh, some of it with you uh, on this channel. So let's get started. More advanced uh, aggregation. So when we're talking about uh, group by and cube and roll up and things like that, we're basically talking about uh, aggregation functions. So uh, the basic question is, what is an aggregation function? So let's take a look. So a simple group by. So if you take a look uh, at the data on the left-hand side of the table, it, it's something like uh, eight rows or so. And if we run a group by, so in this case, it's a group by departments. Uh, what it basically means that we are going to condense uh, all the rows for those departments into one row per group. So group by really means that we're going to get one row per department. And that's exactly uh, what we're seeing here. So the question is, is there some more advanced functionality in SQL which allows us to be more efficient or to calculate uh, more than one thing at a time. So that's exactly uh, the topic of this video. So let's, uh, let's dig in and find out. So as I said already, uh, the group by cube statement is really the core idea is to run more than one aggregation at once. And uh, the reason why we want to do that is basically uh, the, the core idea of reading data once and using it multiple times. So if you have to run many group by statements, uh, basically what you have to do is you have to read data more often. And that's exactly what we want to avoid. So we want to read data once, which is usually fairly expensive uh, on a big system. And we, we want to make as much use out of it as we potentially can. So that's exactly the purpose of, of cube. So Let's prepare uh, some sample data and uh, let's see basically what, uh, what uh, Cube can do for us in real life. Uh, for our sample data, uh, we have a very simple data set on our website. It's basically about uh, oil production. So basically what we got here is we got the region, we got a country, we got a year, we got production and we got consumption. And in order to give you some insights into this data, um, if you happen to be super user uh, on your system, you can very easily load this data. So you could just say copy from the uh, copy the oil from program, and then you're using curl to download the, the stuff from the website and feed it directly into copy. Uh, as I just said, you have to be super user to do that. If you're not a super user, I'm afraid you have to download the file uh, and import it manually. But if you happen to be a super user, uh, that's the easiest way uh, to, lo uh, to load the data. But basically, it's just a tab separated file, so you can load it quite easily uh, with any tool of your choice. So let's take a look at the data. Uh, what we have here is uh, 644 rows. Um, it's production data from uh, North America, which means United States, Canada, Mexico, Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, uh, etc. And uh, the time series uh, starts in uh, 1965, and it goes all the way up to uh, 2005, I believe. So we got production. So 9,000 uh, basically means 9 million barrels per day. So that, that's basically what the data says. So what we see here is uh, in 1974, the United States burned uh, 16 million barrels of oil a day, and they produced roughly 10 million barrels of oil a day. So that's basically the meaning um, of this data, which we're using here uh, for demonstration purpose. So um, 
if we run a simple group by, what we get here is, as I said before, one line per group. So in this case, we got one line for the Middle East and one line for uh, North America. And uh, what we're using here is average. So we got average production and we got count star. So in my data set, uh, we got 506 uh, rows of data for the Middle East and we got 138 rows of data for North America. So th that's basically what our data set looks like. So let's move on to roll up. This is the same query as we had before. I just changed group by one, which basically means group by region to group by roll up region or roll up one, which is the same thing, of course. So what you see here, instead of two rows, what we got now is three rows because what roll up uh, gives us is what I would call the bottom line. So if you look at the count, you will see that 644 uh, means 506 plus 138. So the, the average we see uh, at the bottom is the average of the whole data set. So if we just did select average on the entire data set, we would get something like uh, 2.6 million barriers per day. So roll up is very, very useful if we want to see the bottom line. So it could be male, female, uh, total, uh, sold, not sold, total, etc. So basically it's the, it's the bottom line. And uh, what SQL is going to inject here is a null record, right? So what we have here is Middle East, North America, and the bottom line is, is represented as a null value. And uh, this is very nice because what we did here is to execute two queries in one. So all we had to do is, is to read uh, data once, but basically we got the same as if we ran the query we had before, before plus select average from QA. So it's basically the same. So um, let's move on a bit. Uh, what you've seen so far is, is quite simple, but you really see some interesting behavior if we're adding a second column. So what I did here is select region and country. And to make sure that everything fits on one page, what I've done here is I just limited my data set to Saudi Arabia and the uh, United States. And then we did group by roll up one comma two. So it's two dimensions. It's basically group by roll up region comma country. And what we get here is we get Middle East, Saudi Arabia, and the bottom line. Then we got North America and the bottom line for North America. Uh, what we should do here is basically use more countries. So you would see the data set would be a bit more interesting if we edit more countries, but it doesn't fit on one slide, unfortunately. So uh, bear, bear in mind that I'm trying to keep these examples uh, small. And then, the last line is the bottom line for everything. So what you see here is first we got every country in the Middle East, then we got the total for the Middle East. So Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, whatever you would want to put in the in the in the include. And then we got North America, USA, North America, Canada, bottom line for the for North America, and then the bottom line for everything. So so we basically see that. In this case, uh, SQL has injected three more um, null values here. Uh, so we got three additional uh, lines here in order to give us the subtotal for Middle East, subtotal for North America, and the subtotal for everything in the entire uh, data set. So that's basically what Rollup can do for you. But there is also Cube. And uh, Cube, uh, to sum it up in one word, it's all the combinations. So it's Middle East, Saudi Arabia, it's only Middle East, it's North America, USA, it's only North America, it's only Saudi Arabia, it's only the United States, and it's the bottom line for everything. Right? So what the Postgres is doing here, it's going, it's providing us with all the possible aggregation. So A, B, only A, only B, and the whole thing. Right? So it's like running multiple aggregations at a time with just one query. So that's what Cube is doing. 
And the way you're going to do that in real life is, 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 is as follows. You, you do this free aggregation and you might want to store it in a materialized view or you might store it in a normal table. And the end user is already going to see aggregated data, which has been aggregated uh, efficiently uh, before already. So, so the idea is, is really to, to run this on large data sets and have a pre-aggregated uh, version of this stored uh, somewhere. So let's take a look at the execution plan. So I, I just took the query we've just seen and added explain to that. And uh, the point here is that it, it's basically what, what we, the way what we call it in Postgres is a mixed aggregate. So I, I would say it's, it's a hash aggregate on, on steroids. Uh, that's basically what it is. But what you see here, and the interesting thing is that you basically see that the mixed aggregate is just like four queries, group everything, group by country, group by region, and group by region country. And it all goes into large um, aggregation uh, to provide us uh, with this result. Um, in our case, we only got 640 lines. So performance is not that kind of an issue on this super small data set. But just imagine you, you're doing this on 20 terabytes of data, and it does make a difference if you're reading 20 terabytes of data once, or if you have to read 20 terabytes of data four times, just because you're using so many different aggregations. So at the end of the day, it's a convenience issue, it's a performance issue, and it, it's just a wonderful, cool feature uh, which we got here in, in Postgres. So to sum it up, the topic uh, we're looking at, so rollup and cube are so-called grouping sets. So you can also use this grouping sets clause explicitly to, to be a bit more uh, precise on what you want to aggregate. But in most practical cases, people really do roll up in cubes. So that's, uh, that's the main uh, thing we've seen in the field. And as I stated, it's to avoid IO contentions, so, so to, to reduce uh, IO. And uh, it's a lot better than client-side calculations. And so, sometimes it's only possible on the server side, right? And after all, it's, a, it's, a, it's an anti-SQL uh, compatible feature. So it, it's available in DB2, it's available in Oracle, and it's of course available in, in Postgres. So any questions? So if there are any questions, uh, feel free to ask them uh, in the comment section. Also, uh, please subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the bell to make sure that you get all the notifications and uh, Follow us uh, on Twitter, like us on Facebook, uh, and uh, make sure that you pay our YouTube channel a regular visit. And looking forward to seeing you on our website uh, for the next uh, video. So thank you for your attention, and I wish you all a very productive uh, time.